Hi, good afternoon everyone. Have you ever wondered when you are doing <coughs> a cash transaction with a merchant, whether your money is real or fake? Do you always check the currency that you received against the light for counterfeit? And have you ever thought of whether the money that you received comes from a legitimate source? I'm sure most of you have heard of the term money laundering, but do you actually know about what goes behind money laundering? Today, I'm going to share with you something interesting about this illegal process that goes behind this um, activity. Well, money laundering consists of three um, steps basically. Firstly, placement. Second, layering. And third, integration. I'll be explaining the terms later on. By placement, what do I mean by placement? Um, okay, before I go to this, let's discuss about who mainly uses the technique of money laundering. Basically, money laundering is used by um, people who deal with illegal activities like drug dealers or corrupt officials. So, the definition of money laundering is that um, you actually engage in financial transactions to conceal the identity of your source of money. In other words, what it means is that you try to, to <coughs> Um, hide the identity of your money that you have gotten from an illegal source and try to present it to others as if you got it from a legal source. So by the first process placement, this refers to the income that perhaps um, the drug dealer has um, gotten his money from, um, maybe from the sale of drugs. And what happens is he will want to try, try to hide the money that he has from other people and he does not want others to know that he has this sum of money from illegal activities. And the process which he tries to hide the money that he has is through the process of layering where he tries to move his assets or he tries to move his money into other different forms. What do I mean by this? First of all, he can try to deposit his money into offshore accounts. So if I'm a citizen of the United States and I do not want to be um, traced of how much money I have, I'll try to put my money into a bank, for example in Switzerland, in a Switzerland bank where the bank actually has secrecy laws and will not divulge my account information. So by this way, the government will not be able to trace how much money I have and will not be able to trace um, why I have so much money. Um, how I can do that is that I can open many different offshore bank accounts using different names. So I can go to Switzerland and open a bank ac account using a name uh, John and go to another country, maybe Hong Kong, and open another bank account using my another name James. So in this way, it will be really difficult to track me down if the officials suspect that I'm dealing with illegal activities. The next move which I can take is trade in which I can use my illegal money to buy and invest in um, a solid thing. For example, I can use it to buy a car, a house, something which um, cannot be measured directly. And the third way I can do it is to do it using a legitimate business. For example, I can set up um, a hair, hair salon and it's hard to track how much money I actually make from the hair salon service because most of the profit and most of the cash transactions that I have with the customers are mainly cash, cash based and there's little records on how much money I actually make from this um, hair salon service because most people do not pay using um, credit cards or check. So what I can do is that I can actually um, inflate the or actually try to project a higher amount of uh, earnings that I have that I have rather than the actual amount that I actually make. So in other words, I'm trying to hide the illegal money as I have into the profit that I have actually earned from this legitimate business. In a way, tricking, uh, in, tricking other people into thinking that I have actually earned this money via a legal way. And as you can see, layering actually 
involves many different steps and most um, people when they are actually dealing with illegal activities, what they will do is that they will actually adopt all the different approaches stated here. And after moving their assets around, they will actually go on to integrate into integration. In other words, to bring the money back to make it seem as if it's clean money. So they will actually invest it into legitimate financial institutions like structured deposits or even into just a normal bank savings account. And in this way, if you look at it, what I have do is I have done is that basically I have illegal money. And then through this whole process of placement, layering and integration, I've actually create the perception that <coughs> this money that I've obtained are actually clean or in a way legal. So this is basically how money laundering works and I hope you have gained a better appreciation of how money laundering works and do be careful if the next time when someone asks you um, about a very good business investment opportunity which sounds too, too good to be true, do, do keep this in mind um, and do question um, that, that person who actually offers you that opportunity which sounds too good to be true. Yeah, with that I end my presentation. Thank you.